So good morning, everyone. So I am going to talk about testing Lua. I'm not sure if that's a very interesting subject, but that's part of what I do, important part of what I do, so I think it's important sometimes to expose that. So we start with this, what is common in these three pieces of code here? Of course, what is common, they, the three of them have bugs, the three of them are real. The first one is from a header file in Visual Studio, a standard header file with the math.h. The second one is from an apocryphal version of Lua that Mark sent me with a bug report. And the third one is a famous one from Apple, uh, SSL uh, authentication protocol. And what is common about the three examples here too is that all of them are bugs that would be got in almost trivial tests. Almost, almost any test you do. The, the, the first line is an attempt, a um, uh, med mediocre attempt of Microsoft to implement C99 standard math functions for floats and so they got the, the mod f function for doubles and they tried to adapt it to floating to single precision floats but of course this cast of a pointing to float to a pointing to double doesn't work and if you just call this function once if just any number different from zero and check the result you would see that that doesn't work. So it shows that they never ever tested that function once. Or if they did, they did it with zero. <laughs> <laughs> the second one, the problem here, of course, is that the size of the buffer, the buffer can be a pointer, and so you get the size of the buffer. This function limits its output to this given size here. So if you test it with any result that is larger than a pointer, more than eight bytes, or I mean, if you are trying to test something in a buffer, of course you try to get as large the buffer as it can get. So you, you try this function if anything larger than any by eight bytes or four bytes, depending on your machine, and check the result, you will see what is wrong. And this bug, that, that there was a lot of discussions about this bug, that, that people should not use go to, people should use brackets, etc. But again, what people should do is do a minimal amount of testing, because of course this function is never being followed, and nobody ever tested this with something that fails this, this authentication pass here. So tests are very important. We do a lot of tests, and most of the time, we detect stupid bugs. They are not crazy bugs, there, but, but really stupid bugs that we sometimes we don't see them, and test is one of the best ways we have to detect those bugs. So in Lua, in our tests, we have a, a good test suite, but mainly our goals is to improve the quality of our code, of course. Well, these goals are kind of, uh, of common, or maybe what it's expose bugs and crash the interpreter. One of the main points of uh, Lua is that you should not be able to crash it. Whatever result it gets, you, you do not, do, you should not get those unexpected behavior that you have in C. And what is more important is what we do not try to do with our tests. That's because we have a limited amount of resources to put in tests. So we try to optimize these goals. And so we give up these ones. For instance, we do not do tests to help debugging. When we do find a bug, then we apply different kinds of tests or different kinds of techniques to find the bugs. The tests are, so for instance, we have very few unit testing 
the tests are usually they have a lot of interdependencies. We we'll see that we use the language Lua itself to do a lot of testing. So if something is broken, it can appear in many different tests. So another thing that we don't try to do is to to create a test suite that it's good for all Lua implementations or a kind of conformance test for the specification. We really try to test our implementation and because there is too many in, in the uh, implementation details like error messages and behavior of the garbage collector that is one of the worst parts to test in the language there are some tests that need the internal access to the interpreter so our tests do not aim for conformance with the specification. They are very specific to our implementation. Even sometimes <coughs> between different uh, releases, just a bug fix release sometimes changes some internal details of the interpreter. We have to change the tests because some exactly the tests do depend on these details. Of course we do all kinds of warnings that we can get from the compiler. So during development, we compile with all those warnings. When we distribute them, we usually we, we distribute the source. Usually, we do not put all those warnings because sometimes they, again, they are very dependent of versions of the compiler, etc. So they can create a lot of noise. So usually, in the standard distribution, you just just use the all minus w all warning, but internally we usually use all warnings we can get, except casts that I can talk about that, why we don't use casts later. With a lot of assertions in our code, again, for instance, we have this kind of assertion check expression, and <coughs> every time we run an expression and check an assertion. For instance, uh, an example. So every time we access an object, we check its liveness, whether it's alive in the, uh, according to the garbage collector. Every time you access a union field, we check the, the corresponding tag to check whether the, the, the union actually has that field and not another one. All functions in the CAPA, CAPI check preconditions, and we can turn that independently. And a lot of people have problems with this when they use the API, so we can check, uh, turn on only those checks to, to see if some program is using the API correctly. This is something we just recently changed. There, there are a lot of people, not a lot, but some people complaining with Lua using sprintf, because uh, now some compilers see that as a very dangerous function, so we change it to sprintf, but then our use, for instance, here we have a macro, all uses of that function is through this macro, and this macro makes sure that we really have that buffer available, so it forces an error if you, you cannot just use that and put like a, max integer or max size t here as a, okay, just say the buffer is, is big enough. You really have to, to give here the right size of the buffer, otherwise you get an error here. So we use a lot of assertions in all parts of the, goal, of the code, and of course we turn that off when we do a release. What is bad about testing? One of the main problems, of course, is portability. Another main problem that is related to portability C, lib C in particular, and of course the inherent complexity of a language. I mean, languages are very complex beasts. 
they are very difficult to test. There are very many combinations. Anything is valid, even errors. I mean, you must handle errors. You must handle anything. You just cannot just, exactly as I said, you cannot crash. You cannot just exit and say, oh, this is wrong. I do not accept it and finish everything. Lua must be, it's always, except for panic functions, that it has no way to recover. But if you use Lua properly from the C point of view, then running inside Lua, you should always be able to recover and to, 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 do, to have something stable. So <coughs> portability is a nightmare, of course. Then the numeric types overflow, or overflow differently in different machines. Some conditions are impossible to test in some architectures. For instance, uh, when in 64-bit machines you have a size T with eight bytes, and you cannot find a machine with enough memory to overflow that size T. I mean, you need uh, a lot of memory to to do that, and a lot, lot of time to, to to fill all that memory. And the the, the, the when you do casts, in some machines, some casts lose precision in one direction, in other machines, some casts may lose precision in the other direction, even integers, in and size t. In some very weird machines, you can have a size t smaller than an int. So, I mean, you have no, following the standard in C, you have no guarantees what is going on in, with this. And of course, different C implementations can give different results for several operations. A typical example is the format uh, percent %a for hexadecimal format for floating point numbers. Some machines use different details, so you cannot just check, well, the result is exactly this string. But on the same, at the same time, you want to check whether the result is properly formatted, is according to what it should be, so. Well, C is a problem in itself. If you really follow the standard, I mean, the letter of the standard, it's almost impossible to write correct C code. This is just one of the examples of what the standard says. For instance, the standard says that accuracy of floating point operations and of all library functions are implementation defined. So if you do one plot plus one in floating point, you can give 2.5, 2.3, I mean, it's completely open to the implementation. And until recently, Lua used floats for everything, so that means that all operations were not exactly defined. This is a, a real case too. We got that complaint like I think one or two years ago. <coughs> someone got our tests and run, and the test fails almost immediately with this assertion. And well, they complained. Said, "Well, your libc is broken." Well, actually, according to the standard, the lib that libc is not broken, it's correct, it doesn't, and the standard says 2 power to 3, 2 to 3 doesn't need to be 8, it can be like, oh, it's almost a way, this is, in, this is an integer, it has an exact representation, exact representation, exact representation, but the result doesn't need to be exact. So it's always, this is the kind of problems we have all the time. The good news well, of course, Lua is a very small language. The, the whole code base is 23,000 line, physical lines of code. It's more or less 10,000 lines of logical lines. It's a very small code base. Lua, we will see along the way how we use the language itself to, uh, uh, as I said already, to build a lot of the tests. Lua helps a lot here. A lot of tests are building dynamically during the, the I mean. And another good news is that the tests do not need much performance. They are still pretty fast, but we do not have to worry much about performance, so we can 
abuse some things easily without, well, a few things we have to worry, but not. So, how are the tests? Currently, the, the current suite test, uh, test suite for Lua, it has 12,000 lines of code, so it's more or less half the size of the implementation. And this is Lua code, that supposedly is more compact than the C, so probably we have more or less the same effort going into the tests as it into the implementation. We still have 1,700 lines of C. We have a specific test library that I explained later for some internal access in this extra library. And we have uh, one file usually. Well, I can try to give a demo later, but it just call one command and it runs all tests, etc., and it gives an OK at the end if everything is OK. In my, my old painting machine, this is the old painting machine, it's, it's famous because it, it lasts. I, I retired it three months ago after nine and a half years of good use. <laughs> it was a, a painting four. And even then, it was less than one minute to run all the tests. In my new machine, now it's around five seconds to run all the tests. And it's, as I said, it's mostly automated to run the standard tests. It's just called all, and it runs every, almost everything. So what it's, we have, currently we have 99.3% of coverage. We've test, uh, tested with a coverage tool, which is pretty good. So out of 8,000 executable lines, we have 53 lines that are not covered in the whole code. They are mostly related with overflow tests, as I explained precisely, that we cannot create overflows. And some errors that are very hard to create, for instance, that a few of them you can create, but need a, a, a lot of time. And so this is what we test usually. And we have some global variables to allow skipping some parts. Maybe I talk about the portability problems and some resource intensive. If you want to do the test in very small machines with limited memory, also we can use some, some options not abuse the, the memory of the machine. So the guidelines we use, with, I love this from extreme programming, that a feature does not exist unless there is a test for it. This is really, as I just shown in the, in the beginning, I mean, you have a function, but you never use that function at all, so you have no guarantees at all whether that, that works or, or not, so we really try to cover everything in the language. We frequently test the test. That's something that we frequently do, but it is manually done. But sometimes you just introduce bugs in, in, in the code. For instance, just change a less than for a less equal, or a one to a two, or to some, some random changes, and check whether the tests detect that change, that's specifically true for, for tests, for instance, when you're writing code and, oh, I need a test here to check for this condition, and then, oh, let's see, I'm not going to put that test, the, 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 the check in the code, and then you write the test, and the test goes wrong, and then you say, I really need that test, and then we write the, the check in code and, and see whether things are, are correct. And of course, each bug reported in Lua generates at least one new test. As we do not have a very, uh, as I said, uh, worries about performance, there are a lot of tests of very old bugs that now the whole code around that bug changes. The, the test is <coughs> kind of meaningless, but usually just keep them. The, so there is very ancient tests in Lua for bugs that cannot exist anymore because the, the, the whole structure of the code changed, but there is no reason to remove them. 
And of course, the main guideline is to always remember our goal. When we had many people test, just trying to feel some obligations, just try to feel comfortable, say, oh, okay, I did my test. And we really have to want to find bugs. I, when, when I teach that, usually I say to my students, imagine that the code was written by your worst enemy and you want to destroy his career, you must find <laughs> bugs here. This is your main goal. You want to destroy the career of the guy that wrote that code. You want to show how bad is that code. So you really have this state of mind when you do testing. You really want to, you want to explore any possibility, any way to whatever you have to do to find a bug in that code. And although, as I said, the, 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 the standard tests are automatic, there is still a lot of stuff that is, must be done manually. For instance, tests for multiple platforms. We test the, the, manu the automatic part is in one platform. If I have to do it manually, we don't have any kind of distributed system that runs tests in, in a lot of platforms. Actually, usually we test only on Linux, that's my machine, and Windows, uh, it's a virtual machine that we use with the uh, old Windows installation. That's you, and sometimes on Mac OS, other other tests we we have to ask people to do tests for them. We don't have the machines anymore, and also multiple configurations. For instance, now Lua three have official support for different number numeric types. You can use doubles or flows. You can use 64-bit integers or 32-bit integers. And we have to check these options manually. The compatibility options also, we have to turn them on, test with them on and then off manually. That's, we, we try to improve that, but not for now. Also, we, as I said, there is a few kinds of tests that are too hard to, to even, we are not worried about time, but the performance, but some of them are really slow, and then we have to turn them on manually sometimes for some specific case. I can talk about, for instance, we have one flag about stack reallocation that every single time that Lua could reallocate the, the stack with this flag on, Lua will reallocate the stack. So the same thing for the emergency garbage collection. Every memory allocation, Lua can do an um, emergency collection. It means there is not enough memory. It does a, a whole garbage collection so there is a flag, a compiler flag, that every single allocation in Lua does a complete garbage collection. So it's really slow, but you can detect that all points in, in the code really can afford a garbage collection there without errors. And this is the worst of all memory traversal. We have a function that traverses the whole Data struck all objects in Lua, checking for the garbage collection consistency, whether white objects are not pointing to black objects, etc. And we can call it explicitly, and in some, with a flag turned it on, in every single step of the garbage collector, we do this whole traversal of memory. Those, those tests are really slow. Some of them can take hours to, to, to run. So we use them just sometimes just with some parts of the, the, the code, or once in a while, once in a month, or before a uh, 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 full release, we run those full tests. And as I mentioned, sometimes we do this testing. The test is, uh, of course, is manually done. We do not have anything automatic about that. Well, the basics, of course, there's lots and lots and lots of very conventional and boring stuff, just calling functions, checking the results. There isn't, I mean, just 
for all kinds of combinations of input, valid inputs, invalid inputs. Of course, we have a lot of checks for errors. We call the protected call a key ingredient. So we define functions like that check that calls a function with some parameters and check whether the message conforms to, to some kind of, has some kind of string inside it. So again, we have lots and lots of tests like that, but that's very boring. What is very interesting, <coughs> as I mentioned, is that we use Lua a lot to generate the test case. So that's a, a very simple example. This is to test our implementation of hexadecimal floating points. So we want to test them with a lot of digits. So for instance, here we create dynamically uh, a number with 150 digits and check whether the, the result is correct. Here we create a function with <coughs> 1,000 digits. These kind of numbers are very crazy, but they should work correctly. You just put point zero zero to have 1,000 zeros. You already lost all precision. You think you lost all precision because it's a very small number, but then you put a higher exponent here and then you correct everything. And it should work correctly in those cases. So, okay. And of course, this is dynamic. We have this inside the loop that you can change that for very for all kinds of different sizes. It's just it's parameterized here, and this one is parameterized somewhere around here that I don't remember. <coughs> this is an, another example of a really extreme test, it's uh, a, a single test to test a uh, champ with too many lines. So we just create a string with one, one million end of lines, and we have a function that keeps re returning that million lines repeatedly, and so we try to load that function, that chunk that has infinite lines, and we should have an error of too many lines. This, another, this is a, a test that also takes some few minutes to run because it keeps, I mean, it, it must read like the 4 billion lines. 2 billion is a signed integer. This is an example of those stupid bugs I was talking about. This is a very simple check, you just check whether the, the line counter is not larger than the maximum number, the maximum integer. So, and it worked immediately, <coughs> but the first time I run this check, it crashed in Lua. And the problem was the, 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 the detection of the error were perfect, okay, the, 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 it's an overflow, easy to detect, but then we call the error function and the error function always shows the last token it read. And in that case, it didn't read, read any token because the file has only new lines. And so when it tried to print the error message, it crashed. It detected the error correctly, but when it tried to print the error message, it crashed the interpreter. So that's why we really have to test everything. It seems, oh, it's obvious. It, nothing can go wrong here. It did go wrong. And so these are examples. We have other tests like that that for these are in a separate file, as I said, because some of them take hours, some of them take, take minutes. These uh, we have an infrastructure to test syntax limits. So for instance, here we have this test repetition that creates chunks with some initial part, then repeat that part that many times. There's a closing part and a repeat part, so we can create like multiple assignment with 100 variables here or 200 variables or whatever. And the limit in Lua, we have a limit because the problem here is the recursion. This is recursive in the implementation, and so we could uh, get a, a real step overflow I mean, if you go too deep 
in this recursion. The standard limit in Lua is 200 calls, so usually all those things are limited to at most two, a little less than 200 repetitions <coughs> here, etc. So we use that that's wrap for all kinds of uh, repeat we have for multiple assignment, for nesting constructors, for nesting parentheses, nest, nested calls, nested structures, etc., etc. All, all of them use this, this function test wrap that have very, has a very simple implementation. As I say, just repeats the repeat. It's very simple to talk in. But it always gets the string, tries with 190 repetitions, it should work, and then tries again with the, this maxi level that is 200 plus one, and then it should get an uh, error message with too many C levels in that case. Some tests with uh, those that use Lua for a long time may remember we did have a lot of bugs related to shortcut optimizations, short circuit optimizations in Lua with that kind of expressions. Sometimes, sometimes we didn't got the, the right result. In, instead of 10, we got 2, or instead of 2, we got, I mean, it's always logically correct, but not always the correct value that it should be according to the so now we have this code that generates all kinds of combinations of some different elements to, to, to some very large size. It means like 4,000 or 5,000 different combinations of all this stuff. These are the basic. Of course, we have to check whether the values are correct or not. So we give the syntax elements and the cor corresponding value, so we have nil, false, ten, true, and some global variables. And we try to combine them with and, with or, and there's, yes, and then or, and then we implement functions to do so. We create a chunk to do the computation, and in parallel we create a function in Lua that should do the same computation, but in a completely different way, not using any kind of short circuit optimization and check whether they give the same results. So this is just <coughs> the code to create all combinations. It's <coughs> One particular hard thing to ch check in Lua is the standalone interpreter, because exactly because it is interactive. And so it's not very easy to automate those tests. Then th those are not portable tests because we need a lot of support from the shell. Of course, we need a lot of input-output redirection. We do use environment, environment variables and some extra facilities <coughs> that I show here. Some, some tests are very primitive, we just create a, a temporary file for output and for instance this just testing the standard input, we create some code here, pipeline it to Lua and pipeline the results to output file, check the output file, you are checking some options, the, this one is to read the input again, so we have this standard test. Here is, for instance, a test for errors in Lua init. Where you have this variable Lua init that runs code before anything else. And what happens if this code has errors? So we just create an environment with Lua init being an error and call Lua and check that the error message should be something Lua init in line one as error 10. And again, we can run Lua with an invalid option, we may have to check that option is invalid. This is a more interesting test. This is to test the control C, that when you're running a script, you can kill the script, but not kill Lua when you press control C. So you create a, a script 
that we call do a protected call from a function that prints 12, then enters an infinite loop, and then it prints 42. Then we create a, a shell that runs that script and echoes the process number. So we start that shell, we read from it, so it waits until the shell, the, the, the rule process prints 12. So we check the result is 12. Now we know it, the, the, this script must be inside the protected call, and then we send a kill to that process number. And then we supposedly <coughs> that kill should kill the loop and the protected call, but as I said, it should not kill the script. So after that, Lua should continue running, printing 42, and so we check that we get it 42, and then we close the, everything. So this is the automatic way to check that control C is working the way it should. Yes. As I said in the beginning, we have a test library that's uh, 1,700 lines of C code. That offers a lot of support for to test in some internal stuff and to, te to test the C API. I talk about some of the things now. First, we have a kind of disassembler that you can just give a function. We have this function here. The T is the name of this internal library. I don't know why it's called T. I think from tests, probably. And then this list code, we just give a function and it returns a table with the opcodes in that function. So for instance, we can check that the infinite loops, like y1, do something and n. We can check that it gets compiled to a single jump. So <coughs> this function checks whether the opcodes for this function is really just a load constant, there is the local A equal 1, and then the jump, it should be jump back, and so there is the test was optimized away. Here is something similar, a repeat until true, that all jumps were optimized away, so it has just the load and the return. So we need this kind of internal access to, to, to code to test that kind of optimizations. Here is an example to test constant folding. This function get access to the list of constants in any function. And so we get the constants in a function and if we check that we have the only one constant and that the constant has the expected value. And then we create a lot of <coughs> code, for instance, like that. And we check that all code is just return that number, all, all those computations were done in compiler time and were folded by the compiler. We have of course a personal memory allocation that is very standard that it checks sizes in all the allocations, it, it checks write violations, it, it checks that when we were finished we check that all memory was free. There is no not only known memory leaking, but I mean, we really release <coughs> all memory. And it, we, we, it ensures that all calls to be unlocked actually change the block address. So we, again, we force bugs if there is something that depends on this behavior. <coughs> and this also it's very important, I will show in a moment, we can set a limit for the total memory that we have <coughs> any time we try to allocate more memory than this limit, we get a memory error from the, from the allocator. So for our memory allocation errors, what, we, what is that we get the total memory Lua is using and set a limit seven bytes larger than that and then seven bytes larger than that and increase the amount of memory that Lua has by seven bytes each time until we are able to run some specific test. 
So in that way, we force memory errors all along the path that, I mean, all possible point of allocation along that path. And of course, at the exit, we have that check, that check that there is no memory leak, so everything that was created and then later there was a memory error has to be deallocated correctly, etc. So, so this is the, the, the function, it's very standard, it has a total memory, as I said, and then it has a loop. We increment the amount of memory, set that limit, and then we try to run the code. We undo the limit, and if the code runs correctly, then we break, otherwise we do a garbage collection and we fix that. Very easy. And we do that for, as I said, we do that to, when we type to create states, to create coroutines, to load strings, to do files, constructors, etc. many different types of tasks we run across this test here. Memory traversal already talked about that. This is something that it's very, I think, one of the most important parts of the test suite is how we test the C API. Of course, we don't want to write C code to test the C API, but, but we need C code, of course, to test the C API. And so how we do that test? What we did is that we created a kind of um, micro language to run the C API. So here the, 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 we have this function test C and it receives a program <coughs> in that micro language, that simple language, that is just common to the C API. So we call this function and then it, for instance does push number, push number, push number, push number, return to, and then we check that the results are correct. And using this micro language, we can do all kinds of tests. We can rotate the stack. We can put things, remove things, and do all kinds of computations in the, in the C API in Lua. So this is one of the most uh, uh, interesting parts of the, of the test library is this interpreter of this language. So for instance, here we test the function rotate. And of course, the, 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 because we are calling a, a C function, the C function, the, 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 this micro language has natural access to the stack. So the, it, it just get the stack as it gets from this function with pass parameters to the function. They are automatically in the stack. When you return, you return star, returns everything from the stack. So it's very easy to, to, to do off to, to put objects in you could put objects through the language or through the parameters. You can check results either inside the language or outside through the results. It's very really very flexible. And we can create C, using C closures, we can create C functions, independent C functions that when they got called, they run a specific script. We put the script as a value of the C function. So here, for instance, I make a C function, an independent function here, that when I call it, it runs that specific list of instructions for the API. <coughs> that really gives a lot of flexibility for passing the, the C API. And this is an extra, we can test coroutines with C bodies that we can give two pieces of code that one is the, the standard function, the other is the continuation that we call it when the protein is interrupted and resumed. These are very, very particular, very deep thing inside the, the, the Coroutine implementation that you can have C functions interrupted and recovered later, and you can test them all this stuff. How much time do I have? Uh, a couple of more minutes. Three minutes. 
three minutes to be exact, but uh, we uh, okay. suggest that we... No, but I have finished already. Uh, just, uh, well, we have some tests for the panic function that again we use. The, this is completely outside the world. We just create a new state and run some code in the API using that uh, micro language. And then we have something and we can give code to be run inside the panic function to test these panic errors. Panic errors are errors. There are no recovery points to, to, to try to do a recovery. But anyway, we must be able to do something. So this, it's not well, so just to finish, as I have already mentioned, this test, or the hard stack test, and you have a relocation, the hard memory tests. This option was the animator that told me about this option for compiling. I was using that one that already got a lot of good bugs, but this one got some extra bugs, although it does have a bug in, the, in uh, I'm using Clunk, and it has some kind of strange bug that when I compile Lua with this option, it gets like uh, three minutes to compile it instead of 10 seconds. This option gets more than three minutes to compile the <coughs> source code. It's something strange. Of course, some, from time to time, we use Volbright to, to check memory accesses, etc., to memory violations. And so, as I said, tests are very important to avoid stupid mistakes, although we have all kinds of complex tests, most of the things we get are stupid mistakes. A good test suite is an essential tool for maintenance and evolution. It gives a great confidence when you change anything in the code, when you do mainly, when you do big, ch big changes that involves a lot of different parts <coughs> of the code. Tests, I mean, a good type system is also a very good help, but tests are even more important than a type system. Thinking about the tests, as I, I said, improve our understanding of the code. More than once I remove stuff from the code because I wasn't I I checked in the coverage and I saw oh, this part of the code is never running. And then I try to force the bug and then I think about that and I say, oh, this can never happen. It is completely impossible. So it just changes the code to an assertion to document that that can never happen and just remove the code. It happened more than once. And this also is something that is very, very, very important. Is that the testability is a very important <coughs> cost measure for features in the language. Every time anyone suggests anything in the language, or any kind of feature you want to implement in the language, you should think about how hard it is to test it. For instance, garbage collection is a nightmare, but it pays <coughs> a, a, a good compromise. But uh, an incremental garbage collector is a uh, much worse nightmares, the worst part of the language test. Functions, independent functions in library are usually very easy to test. They are completely independent of the rest of everything they can have. But this is something that is very important in our experience. And of course there are still a lot of bugs. We have an average of kind of nine bugs per year. It's a, an average, but it's seen for many years now. Most of them are well hidden bugs. Most people find them either exploring the code or using tools. I mean, it's very, very rare to have a, a kind of real bug in it. Like, oh, everybody. It's, it's practically never we got two reports of the same bug because that is someone finds the bug in a very specific circumstance and nobody else got that bug. And of course, as we remove bugs, we change the language and then we create new bugs all the time. And we also we have found many 
bugs uh, around along the years in C compilers and in libraries. We have that one that I mean, well, it's not officially legally a bug, but it is a bug to three. So once we got a, a lib C that accepted that as a floating point correct floating point number. I, this one is some those cases I don't remember what was this one, but this is a very funny one that uh, is a documented bug that Microsoft Visual Studio just said it doesn't do conversions from unsigned longs to floats, and that's it. That's it. It's, it, it's documentedly broken. It says it doesn't work. You should use a, a silent conversion that doesn't do what you want, but that's the. We got uh, recently, I think one year ago, in Clang, of uh, optimization in the indirect table call that just vanished with something. It was a very bad bug, a very strange thing. And along the way, we found many other bugs in C, etc. Cool. That's it. Questions? Any questions? Yeah, it can be questions about you in general, don't be about the presentation. But quick one. Uh, can we try to run uh, Puzzle with Bargain or Saint Isaac? Puzzle. It feeds your uh, application with random data or find data and checks that how application will react on such a undeterministic data. It's additional tool to check application, how it behaves. Can we try to run Puzzle with your application? With Lua. I'm not understanding the so word to Like run. the AFL, the fuzzle. 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 It's a particular tool. Uh, it, oh, it, 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 it randomly generates, like, it fuzzle oh, randomly okay. generates yeah, yeah, and it that tries that to run it against. I don't know what that means. Okay. So usually, we do, uh, different people have used a lot of different tools. On top of Lua, we, I don't know if someone had used it that way. I, I, I didn't. I don't. At least I'm not recognizing the name now. <coughs> but we frequently we get bug reports that someone, as I said, several bugs are, fine, are, are found through some tool that some. Oh, I tried Lua with that tool, and then I found that bug there. So, Uh, do you have anything that you're working on for the next release? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> one thing we are trying hard to fix the the, the, the stuff around the sizes of arrays, the hash operator. But this is, a, uh, this is a nightmare that goes for many years. We changed that several times and never worked correctly. So we are kind of afraid of breaking compatibility for something that may not work again. So, but we, I'm thinking hard about that. We are trying to explore ways of sharing data among different states. This is something, for instance, one thing that should be easy, for instance, to, to share strings, at least, to, to, that would be more generic, like uh, to have external strings in Lua. You don't have to, to have internal copies. So this is something that's very, not very complicated, but we are trying to, to find a good API for that. We, we are playing, but that is more, more, more long term, like uh, immutable tables that could be shared, but it's much more difficult exactly because of this problem with strings, because if the table has internalized strings, then you have a lot of problems sharing those tables. But this is something that we want to explore, because we really think that the, the, the way for multi-threading in Lua is, is uh, well, can call actors, but like Lua lanes, you have different light, light processes. It's the same as actors that share passing messages, but then sometimes it would be good if we could just share some immutable 
structures, and so this is. Sorry. Oh, that is. The, we are oh no that part should be we are we are thinking about sharing uh, the 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 big parts the the code itself not the, the the whole prototype because again it has a lot of detail like uh, string constants that are hard to share but we would like to 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 use that same mechanism for st external strings to has external code for instance so we have a, a big uh, byte code you could just say use that bytecode there instead of creating, a, when you load the bytecode you just say oh, the bytecode is already there, use that. This is something that we are also, that should be easy, that should be good. I think we have to stop for lunch because we have a limited time for lunch. Okay, sure. The lunch is just downstairs, we cut in from the street, mm -hmm. by the reception area. The signs 